What's up, AG? What's up, brother Rivers? What's happening, brother? What's up, Joe? Hey, Joe, go Duke, brother. You see what's going on? No Tar Heels in trouble, man. You might as well call, um, uh, what's y'all coach name on it? Oh, um, what's the coach name for Tar Heels, man? I don't even know. Well, it don't matter. They bums anyway. Hey, you might as well tell the, well, Roy Williams. Tell Roy Williams to cancel those two games at, with Duke, man. Sharif, what's up, brother? Hope you guys enjoy your Thanksgiving tomorrow. Bum Williams. Or Roy Bum. Which one which one you think? No, nah, but no, nah, no, nah, he get mad respect though. He Roy Williams is a good coach. He's a good coach. Hey, Joe, you nervous, man. I know you're nervous. I can't even see you, but I know you're nervous. You look nervous when you type that up there. <laughs> What's up, Brother Brown Dorian? What's up, man? Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another cold and chilly Morning here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, man. It's a little chilly out here, man. My, my southern bones still haven't got used to this kind of weather. Um, thank you guys for watching the show that's watching on Facebook Live. Thank you guys. We appreciate it. And everybody that's listening to WOM 92.9 South Philadelphia Community Radio, we thank you as well. Um, it's good to be here. Glad you guys are listening and watching. Um, tomorrow, you guys know it's Thanksgiving. And uh, we want you guys to enjoy yourself, enjoy your family time. Um, it's always something to be thankful about. Um, waking up in the morning and, be, and being able to have a job, that's something to be thankful about. Um, I know you guys, I, and myself included, uh, did not like what happened with this whole uh, contract situation. But it's still um, something to be thankful about because we still have a job. A lot of people don't have them. A lot of people are not in unions, and I know you probably say, well, the teams are not doing anything, but um, be thankful that we are in the union working for this company because if, if, if it was the other way around, uh, none of us would be there. So I'm thankful for that. Um, you guys know we started um, a raffle. starts today, but a few people have uh, given us money already, and I want to say thank you to uh, those people for believing in what we're trying to do and hopefully what we will accomplish next year in the next 11 months. Um, we've been we've been working hard at this for about four years now. Um, you guys know 2016, we came up just a little bit short, about 37 slate votes short of what we were trying to do. Um, so we just stayed at it. We're staying at it. Uh, we, we, we're doing a lot of things different than we did in 2016, we learned a whole lot, a whole lot in a short span of time. So um, thank you guys for believing in us. And uh, that link, to, if you want to donate, um, you can uh, go to PayPal. You'll see it. I, I'll put the link back up there. It's PayPal slash 623LivesMatter. Um, you can donate. The tickets are $1 a piece. We're raffling off a 43-inch Samsung TV, 4K UHD. Um, it also comes with a 30-day free trial of Sling TV. I don't even know what Sling TV is, but it's free for 30 days, so you can enjoy that to whoever's winning. We also, um, you know, we'll be at the gate, so we're in the building. We also accept cash. But for all those people, you know, that don't have cash, like to do things electronically, PayPal, donate the dollar, and we will appreciate it. All right, so again, um, you're listening to WOM 92.9 FM radio. You also can donate to the station uh, to make sure that, you know, we keep going and going. I think it's SPCR.org. You can hit donate up there. Um, no amount is too small. Um, every donation matters. We appreciate that. We thank you in advance. 
If you guys like hearing our show and other shows, um, please make sure you donate. Uh, we appreciate that as well. So we're going to get right into it. Um, last Saturday, man, we had a union meeting at 623. And it was... Uh, it was it was something it was very interesting because a lot of a lot of uh things happened that I believe that should not have happened and, you know uh I'm not going to get all into it but those that were there you know I know you saw it but we had an isolated incident um but you know it it was squashed but I I believe and I like to apologize for that too you know but uh I believe the next 11 months um it's going to be like that probably in every meeting. Every meeting is probably going to be like that. I think that our e-board has gotten tired of hearing us complain about what they're not doing. And they're fed up with it. And the members are, are tired and fed up because they're not doing anything. So these next 11 months are going to be very, very interesting. So it's not going to be for the faint of heart. You Make sure you got thick skin because, you know, people are going to say stuff. They're going to do stuff to try to get people to break character and all these kinds of things. But, uh, you know, that's not what we're about. We're all about promoting positivity and, uh, you know, progress. You know, emotions get high sometimes and people say things they, they shouldn't say. So, uh, you know, things happen. Um, we don't condone that. But, hey, you know, it wasn't right what was said. But, again... Because it's a reflection of us uh, in, to in, a, in a totality situation as far as the 623 Lives Matter thing. But like I said, in, in that same breath, um, even though I don't condone it, I want you guys to also remember not that long ago, um, we had the same situation coming from my principal officer, um, saying some things about my family and, and my role and everything. So um, you can't have it both ways. You know, we, we can we can talk bad or we can do this and do that. But don't forget, there's two sides to the story, you know. Um, neither neither party was right. But my thing is just don't isolate something that benefits your narrative and forget the whole story. To the conclusion of the whole matter, don't leave your part, don't leave the whole part out that will also make your side look just as bad as our side. And I'll just leave that there. Uh, you guys were at that meeting, so... Not gonna harp on it because there's really nothing to talk about. It was wrong. Um, hopefully, it doesn't happen again uh, from neither side. All right, so we're just gonna leave that there. Um, again, <coughs> thank you guys for signing the petition. Man, we have almost about, well, we might have over 400 signatures now. Um, everybody, you know, everybody's excited because um, this local needs transparency. We need transparency, and we don't have it. So um, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad that people are finally starting to open up their eyes and see that this negotiation process, we need to have more people there that are for us and not against us. You know, for us and not for the IBT and what they say and for Hoffa and, and everybody and, and his whole idea and Everything like that because this this what just happened not long ago, man. It's gonna resonate for a long, long time. So we need to do our part and make sure when the time comes to get rid of all these people that are causing these causing us these situations like this, we need to get rid of them. Um, so again, now as it goes here, now in January's meeting, um, we're gonna be talking about it, but I want to give you another update in January's meeting as it states in our current bylaws. We have to have seven signatures. We have way more than that. And not only that, um, when I give it to uh, our principal officer, Bill Shanahan, um, he's going to check the signatures to make sure, at least seven of them, to make sure that they're still working there, um, that they are paid up on their dues and everything like that. Um, but we really want people to be there because it's going to be a, a historical moment for the local. And don't forget, next year is our 100th anniversary. So we really want you guys to be there when we pre present this to the to the locals. Um, I know a lot of people were asking, are they going to accept it? Well, if we do our part and make sure we get the signatures and um, 
then there's nothing they can do to try to stop us. Because it goes in January, I present it. Um, Shannon had to go over it and check it um, to make sure the signatures are, you know, legit, make sure the people are legit. Then in February's meeting, he'll read it off again. And then in March's meeting, March's meeting is very, very important. I'm going to say that again. March's meeting is very, very important. The reason why it's important is because that's when we vote on it. Everybody that comes to the hall in March will be able to vote for the bylaw amendment. Now, um, I'm hoping that mo majority of the people that signed this amendment will be able to come out and support this amendment because, like I said, no matter who's in office, it will benefit everybody. Even after we're long gone and retired and all these things, this amendment will help ensure that we have transparency in negotiations moving forward because that's what we need. We didn't have it. If you go back to 2013's contract, there was no transparency. Um, what our officials did was they isolated something and made it fit their narrative and it helped them to get the, you know, the proper um, yes votes or whatever to get what they needed. Um, if you don't remember, remember what they used to tell us, the team care was the same thing what we had. Now in name, Blue Cross Blue Shield, it was the same, or it is the same, but as far as coverage, it is not the same. So they got us with that one. And then right here in, in uh, 2018, they didn't tell us anything until July. July, they started negotiating way back in October of 2017. That's when they started really, you know, sitting down and everything. Now, from October 20, 2017 to July 20, 2018, there was nothing said. Now, what we found out, we put out on our website, on our web, on our Facebook page, so everybody could know what was going on. But our leaders didn't tell us anything until July of 2018. And then it was the same stuff, nothing for us. You know, not all all beneficial to the company, and the union didn't fight for us. But they put a little twist in there, saying that if you didn't vote the first time, they were going to take part of your your raise and put it toward your pension. And they told us that in the month that the contract was was originally set to expire, not giving you enough time to really think about what you wanted to do. It was almost that you know they held a gun to your head and said if you didn't do it, this is what was going to happen. So. This amendment will alleviate all those problems. And, of course, if anybody that came to those meetings, you will understand that 33% of our meetings of this year, 33% were about did Jumbo vote yes or did he vote no. I love Jumbo. A lot of our members Jumbo. But when we come down to, to, to the hall, we want to hear about the contract, how we're going to, take care of our families and how is it going to stop UPS from dominating this, this language, how is it going to benefit me in this situation. All we heard for 33% of our union meetings this year was about the jumbo vote yes or no. That's not what we pay for. We pay to find out from our e-board how is this contract going to help me? How is it going to stop UPS from dominating me? How? How? We didn't get any of that. All we heard was did he vote yes? Did he vote no? If you don't vote yet the first time, we're going to push it on you. And that's what we had to go with. So this amendment will alleviate all that stuff from now on. It'll alleviate it. So that way, the members will have a voice, and they will have eyes, and they will have ears, and a negotiating table. And that's very, very important. So again, make sure that we sign this petition that has been going around. We have people at Oregon Avenue helping us out, getting getting signatures. We have people in the feeder department helping us getting signatures. We really we have a, some other people behind the scenes um, at the buildings um, helping us, making sure that we get um, the signatures that we need, getting the word out, getting the word about this show, getting the word about about our YouTube channel because we want to take every advantage of every platform available to us so we can constantly be in your ear, you know. I know you guys probably get tired of hearing it, seeing this, but uh, I'm going to tell you something. With what we got in the office right now, 
you guys gotta you guys gotta wake up so we're gonna keep pounding and pounding the pavement we're gonna keep staying at the gates we're gonna keep doing the same things that we've been doing but we're gonna take it up a notch because we don't want you guys to get complacent and say hey man you know what I think we might as well stay with what we have because you know um, I'm, I'm, I'm too afraid to change I don't know what I'm gonna get it may be worse it may be this but I'm gonna tell you something if you guys don't step out and make a change we are in trouble you see what we have UPS knows what we have and that's the problem they know they can especially now they know they can manipulate the situation and get what they want because these guys have no fight in them good people individually but as a collective leadership they 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 are just not what we need we need somebody with a totally different vision attitude because attitude reflects leadership um, a lot of people wouldn't want to sign this petition they agree with it but they're too afraid of what the retaliation would be from our e-board members if they see their name on there and that shouldn't be you should not be afraid of your leaders you paying them they should be afraid of you I, I can't understand that I don't understand why we as people we paying for something and we're afraid to hold them accountable for what they're doing with our dues money you should not be a victim of your dues you shouldn't be you don't pay to be a victim you pay to, to have the best of everything no concessions but this is what we have so it's up to you guys to make a stand I can sit up here and be on this radio show all day, every Wednesday, every day. But if you guys don't put how you feel and how you express to us on a daily basis on paper, then we will be in trouble. We're going to be in trouble. The pension issue. How did that happen? When did it happen? You know, everybody says that our principal officer is a, is a pension guru or whatnot. But when these problems started happening in our pension... Why weren't we notified? Why did we have to wait until the the, the, the the month of the contract was supposed to expire to find out anything? These are the things that we need to find out and ask our, you know ask ourselves, is it worth it to keep going down this same road to keep getting the same results because UPS is going to still make billions and we're still going to be complaining about what we're not getting. The choice is you it's up to you. A lot of people complain to us about these guys in the office. Um, a lot of a lot of their uh, people who have been loyal to them for years, you know, of coming out and say, "Hey, man, we got to get them out of office." But that's all fine and all. But in 11 months, will you put it on paper? And that is the question. Will you finally put it on paper? Because telling us is one thing, and we appreciate it. It's encouraging. But will you put it on paper? For the next 11 months, you need to ask yourself a question. Do you still want to keep going down this road with what we have? The concessions, not standing up to the IBT and Hoffa, letting the company do whatever they want to do. All these things that keep happening, is this what we want in Local 623? You guys have to ask yourself that question. I can't answer it. You know how I feel. You know how we feel. You've seen us. I know you get tired. I know you get tired of hearing about it. I know you do. I know. But what are you going to do? Somebody got to stand in the gap. Somebody got to stand up and fight. Because it's not enough to just to complain. You got to put those complaints into action. So that's what we did. That's what we're doing. And that's what we're going to continue to do. So in this raffle, make sure you get a, it's a dollar a ticket. If you want to go online and do it, you can go to PayPal. Uh, PayPal slash 623 Lives Matter. Donate a dollar for the ticket. You know, um, the the raffle will be held here um, on January, I believe it was the 16th. We're going to do it the same week when we present our bylaw change. We want to do everything together so people can know, you know, what's happening. And the reason why we wanted to do it so early, especially now, because we know everybody's going to be making some extra money. So hopefully they can spare a dollar and buy a ticket, buy a whole lot of tickets, so we can get this done. If you guys remember, we ain't do none of this stuff in 2016. 2016, I'm gonna tell you something. We did we 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 didn't do a lot of things because we just didn't know. All we knew was they had to go, and they almost got them. Almost we were so close, 37 votes. 
this time is a lot better. The bylaw change. Um, we, we 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 never stop, never stop fighting for our people, never, never stop fighting for our people. We didn't go somewhere and hide, and then come out when it was time to to run for office again. That's not that's not leadership. Leadership, you stay when it's good, you stay when you lose, and you stay when you win. You know what I mean? So, um, and we know it's going to be some negativity toward us. Um, that's just life. No matter what you do, people always find something negative to say. And we appreciate that. Um, I was, like I said, every stone thrown is just a stone toward our foundation. Um, you, 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 can build a fellow, you, you can build a better foundation with rocks than you do with anything else. So, you know, we, we accept the challenge. We accepted it last time, and we're going to do it again. I um, hope you guys are going to enjoy your Thanksgiving tomorrow. Don't eat too much um, because, you know, we got to, hey, after tomorrow, guys, you know, it's, it's, whew, it's going to get ugly. It's been ugly for the last few weeks, but after after tomorrow, man, it's really going to get bad because uh, Cyber Monday is Monday. Then the closer it gets to Christmas, man, we're really going to be humping. So, and, and everybody that's watching this show on Facebook and everybody that's listening, please order your stuff. Order your stuff early. Don't don't jam us up, man. You know, don't jam us up too bad. <laughs> don't jam us up too bad. You know, order your stuff early and make sure that you can get your stuff on time. Um, you know, because uh, we don't... Um, you know, we, we don't want to get bust all up this year. You know what I mean? So, uh, that's right, Doyen. Hey, man, we, we, we got we, we to gotta stand up to the IBT, man. And, and our people in office are not going to do that. Um, they're just not going to do it. I, 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 I just don't understand why. Why on God's green earth that if everybody is saying it's hoffa, hoffa, hoffa then why won't these local leaders stand up together in unison against him and say, hey, look, man, you're not doing right by the members, and it's time for you to go. I have no idea why they won't do that. It, 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 it can't be that hard. Just stand up. Stand up for your members. I just, I just don't understand that. And, and, you know, and I had somebody come up to me maybe a couple of days ago, maybe it was last week, maybe like last Friday, and we was talking about um, some things with our local leaders and why they won't do certain things as far as like stand up for the members here or or just stand up to the uh, IBT because it's always Hoffa, 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 Hoffa. But I want to explain something to you guys. You cannot separate Hoffa from my e-board. They're the same. They're intertwined. There's no separation. Hoffa and our local 623 e-board, with the exception of Jumbo, are the same entity. In order for us to move in the right direction, in the direction that we need, and I want y'all to hear me, we have to vote both parties out of office. Because if we don't, it's going to be the same thing. Hoffa, his ideas... His mechanisms is all tied into his um, local leaders. The reason why you can never beat Hoffa totally because you still have his foundation in place. The only way to get rid of him, you got to get what he stands on, and that's on the local leaders. If we can't do that, then all this stuff is going to mean nothing. When we have our next contract in 2023, it's going to be the same thing. So you guys got to make a decision on what you want to do um, because we cannot keep going down this road with our e-board and we can't keep going down this road with our, with our international um, leaders. It's up to you guys. I can talk to them blue in the face. But if you guys don't put it on paper, then we're in trouble. And, and that's what they count on. I think they count on that because they know people don't vote. Even, even after all this stuff has been done to us, People still don't vote. If you look at the International Brotherhood of Teams election in 2016, how that was handled, 1.4 million Teamsters, 1.4, but only about, what, 200,000 of, 200, of them voted. 
And they count on that. They count on, you know, apathy and, and people not voting. And, and, and I may be wrong on this, but I think they do it on purpose. I think they do it on purpose because... Because they know people don't vote. And they're going to keep doing what they're doing. Because... No matter what they do, people not going to stand up. People not going to fight. People not going to participate. And because of that, they keep doing these same things. Because if it's not broke, they're not going to fix it. Um, I look at our e-board. Um, the only time they really come out to the, engage the membership is election times and contract times. And when they want something for the credit union. Any other time... There is not really a um, a presence that they have because they don't want anything from you. You know what I mean? There is, they, they, you know, when they want something f from you, they they show up. They show up. You know what I mean? F right now, think about this for a minute. When it was time to push this contract, man, they was telling everybody to vote yeah. They was at the they was at the buildings. They was here. They was there, telling everybody, oh man, vote yeah, vote yeah, vote yeah. Now that voting is gone, you don't see them. Watch next year. Man, they're going to be, they're going to be, they're going to be campaigning their behind off. They're going to have their people. They're going to have some, probably some retirees. They're going to be doing whatever they can so they can keep taking our dues. It's not, it's not about protecting you or fighting for you. They just want to be in the office to take our dues so they won't have to do anything but that. So the choice is yours. I like I said, I can't make it for you. I don't even want to make it for you. I, every, this is a uh, you have your free will. You can do what you want to do. Um, so, but you got you guys got to you, you got to look past what you see. As far as oh man, Hooker, you guys, you know, you you got it. You, you're inexper inexperienced. You're young. You this. You that. You got to look past that because what has their experience given us? What has their experience given us? Just think about it. Experience is only good if it's helping the person out or helping the people out. It's not helping us. It's hurting us now. So you can't keep talking about experience when it's doing more harm than good. You can't keep doing that. You know what I mean? Everybody knows um, in order to strengthen the pension, you have to do some sort of organizing, more members into it. Um, I've been here almost 20 years um, in the union that long as well. I don't remember our e-board doing any type of organizing to strengthen the pension. And you may say, well, Hooker, what's your plan? Well, you know what the plan? We already started. Phase one has already started. In order to get more people to want to join the union, you have to show them that you are participating in other things. You have to show them that you're doing something. For an example, I was reading this, this union book, and it's, it's, it's far easier to organize a company and its workers if you're active in doing something for your members or doing something active in your community, doing something active where they can say, oh, yeah, I'm a member of this. So that's why we hooked up with so many other unions and people in our communities. So they can see that, hey, look, if, if we go out and organize, hey, look, what do you guys do in this community? Well, you know what we do? We help out the Poor People's, poor people's Economic and Human Rights Campaign. We did a march with them because some of my members live in those conditions. But what do you do about this? Well, you know what? We have teachers that support us, you know, carpenters that support us. So it's not just 623 Lives Matter. It's 623 Lives Matter. It's the Teachers Union. It's the IOTC Union. It's all these other people tied into one. That's why we started doing this so early. So if we do get elected in the office, it'll be a lot easier to help. Help the union out. Help it grow. Because if you're stagnant, if you're not moving, people are not going to want to join. They're not going to want to listen. They're not. So, like I said, we've been doing a lot of stuff to prepare us to keep moving forward. So you guys can see that, yo, these guys are very, very active. Because you have to create activity to get people involved. You just can't sit still. You got to keep moving. You got to keep moving. You got to create activity for members to be involved. Ron Carey said something 
um, he said it the best. You can't organize new members if it keeps selling out the ones you got. Shout out to 804, Ron Carey. You know what I mean? You can't organize new members if you keep selling out the ones you got. And that's why it's so hard for us to get more people in this union. Don't forget, people, they, they, they do their, their research on unions and find out what, what people involved in and what, what their leaders have done. So why should I get involved in Local 623? Why should I join? Number one, they give their members concessions. Number two, they don't do anything for anybody outside of the union. You know what I mean? What, I mean, what do they do? They only come around when it's election time or when they want something else for as uh, voting for, you know, right to work or anything like that. It's more to unionism than that. It's a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, I've been taught and I've been reading about. There's a lot of stuff that we could do to inspire people to join our union, strengthen the pension. You know what I mean? But people got to give us a chance. You got to give us a chance. That's all we want. That's all we asking for is a chance. That's all we asking for. Because we can do this together. That's what it's going to take. Because, uh, you know, what we got right now is not, it's not happening. It is not happening. It is not happening. I mean, I get, you know, people are always asking about the, the retro check and everything. and Because they were told they vote, excuse me, if they voted yes, they were going to get it. They haven't gotten it. They're all upset. Well, don't get upset. Don't get upset with UPS because they don't care. They don't care if you get your retro check or not. Get upset with the people that, ne that negotiated on your behalf. They're the ones that's telling you these things. Listen, what they did was the same thing they did in 2013. They isolated something that they know people was going to, to, uh, to jump on. They didn't tell you the whole truth. And now this is what we got. When this contract is implemented, I'm telling you, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of problems, man. Because we don't have uh, the people to fight. There's a lot of hoop, loopholes in this thing. There's a lot of loopholes in the contract we got now, and they just added more. They just added more for the company to exploit, because all the union wanted, our officials wanted, was the pension money, and the and and the extra dues money they're going to get. That's all they wanted. So you guys have got to pay attention. Listen, I know there's a lot of guys that's loyal to the guys in the office. Don't let loyalty become your liability. I'm telling you, don't do it. I'm, I'm talking on, on experience. This is not something I heard or something that I read. My loyalty to, to them cost me a lot. And it's costing me a lot. You know what I mean? And it's not just about the whole insurance thing. I'm telling you. When you take the loyal glasses off and you see people for who they are and what they are, you start to look back at everything that has happened. You're like, man, you you was blinded. And I was. But uh, hey look, we all make mistakes and I'm paying for mine. I'm paying for mine. And I want us as a group to stop paying, stop paying for their mistakes, stop paying for their concessions, stop paying for them to be, you know, capitulating to the company. Stop just giving us concessions. Just stop not wanting to fight for it. Stop, you know, just giving in to the IBT. They, all of those guys work for us. Every last one of them. When you get your check, after you done worked all week, after you done got possibly harassed and talked down to and all these things, there's two words on your check that validate that whole check. Two words. Union do that validates all of it it validates all of it and what these guys have done is took your validation and just unvalidated it that's all they did they took it did whatever they wanted to with it and this is what you got this is what you got so you guys gotta wake up you got to wake up, man. You got to wake up. These guys are not for us. And I'm telling you, we hear it every single day about how these guys got to go. They got to go. They got to go. Your guy said that in 2016, too. You said they had to go. So I'm telling you now, if you're really serious about these guys having to go, you need to put it on paper. 
when, in next October, in 11 months, you need to put it on paper. We're going to still be out there. We're not going nowhere. We, we are in this to, for the members. We are in this for the members. We want the members to have, you know, the best leadership that's possible. We're not perfect. God knows we're not perfect. But I'm telling you something. You guys will not be um, disappointed with what we have in store if given the opportunity. You won't be. You won't be in store. And all we've done was just build up, build up, build up so you guys can see what's going on. Because this, this just can't keep happening, man. It just cannot keep happening. It can't keep happening, you know? You know, everybody complain, but everybody don't participate. You know, we you know we did the numbers. We find you know there's a lot of things we find out about. Like I said, this whole thing with this whole um, transparency thing, we asked for it, and 33 percent of our union meetings this this past year, 33 percent of them were all about the jumbo vote yes or the jumbo vote no. That's not what we come down there for. That's not. You know what I mean? So, again. We, we, this bylaw amendment is very, very important. You know, thank, again, thanks to everybody that signed it. We have up until January 19th. To, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> we have until January 19th to keep on getting them, and we will. So that's about, what, uh, two months? So we got two months left to get signatures. We got about 400 now. So we want at least, we want at least to have as much as possible. I, I don't want to put a number on it, but uh, we got 400 now. And that was in about, we got about 400 signatures in three weeks. Yeah, about three, about three or four weeks, we got about 400 signatures. So in about, what's the, eight weeks, hopefully we can double that, triple that, but we'll see. You know what I mean? We're going to be at the gates. We're going to be in the hubs. We're going to be everywhere because they got to know that we mean business. Like I said, we only need seven signatures. We got that in like five minutes. So you guys got to sign it, man. Take a, hey, look. You guys got to get out of your own way. I'm telling you. You can't let these guys make you feel like, hey, look, man, if, 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 uh, let me see. What oh. So, uh, you know, you guys got to, you guys got to vote. You guys have got to vote. If you don't vote, we are in trouble. And it's going to keep happening. And it's going to keep happening. I want, I want this local to be, Mentioning the same centers like local 804 and local 251 and 89 and 705 and 17. I wonder when we look back at all these things, man, that that these, these local 623 was a great local, man. They had some really good people, man. They had some good fighters over there, man. How can we get like them? That's why we do the things we do, man. We want to bring spotlight. We want to spotlight the members. Let them know, hey, look, this is what you could be. But you gotta vote for it. You gotta vote for it. You gotta vote for it. It's not gonna happen just by talking about it and complaining about it. It's gotta happen by you voting. And it will. I feel really good about this. I mean, I feel a lot better than we did in 2016. But uh, you guys have got to get involved. <coughs> you gotta, you gotta show support. You can't hide on the sideline. And and you know, these guys gotta know that they have to go. They have to know it. Only people that can tell them that is the members. They already know how we feel the 63 Lives Matter guys. They already know. They expect that every time we go to the union hall, we speak. They already know we're going to say something. They already know. But they need to see other people. They need to see new people come down and, and say, hey, look, man, you guys got to go. That's why a few months ago when we had a part-timer out from Oregon Avenue when he came out and he asked Shanahan, he said, Shanahan, are you endorsing this contract? And Shanahan said, yeah. And Chuck said, you know what? When is the next election? He wanted him to know that because you um, like this contract and you want to force it on us, you guys got to go. And that's what everybody need to tell them. They need to know. They need to know what's going on. You all right? Yeah, hey, I know. I know. Uh, Hold on. Let me get your breath. Tell them. You tell part time is about Friday and Saturday now? No, I don't even know about Friday and Saturday. I don't even know about it. Mandatory. Starting this week, mandatory. What, next week? Work, starting this week. They got to work six days a week. Starting? 
this week. This week. Okay, well, Jumbo just came. He said that it was mandatory for but on preload? On preload. I think the whole hub is going to do it. But right now, starting this week, preload. Right. So who, did, who said that? Who, who said that? Nicole and them? Mandatory. They we said, had a union meeting. They didn't even bring this up. Oh, so well, you got to explain all that. So you saying that they had a meeting? And, and they were saying at the union meeting, they right. didn't bring any of this up. Right. And this was important, whether you got to work Friday or Saturday. Right. So starting this Friday, right. Saturday, all the people got to work. It's mandatory. If they don't come in, they got to call out. Okay, yeah. So if you're not coming in, call out Friday and Saturday. Right. All right. So if you're not going to plan, if you're not planning on going in, make sure you, you call and tell them that because I don't know what they're going to try to do. Well, I mean, if you ain't got bad attendance, you don't have nothing to worry about. Now, the other thing, they want all full-timers to work Friday and Saturday. Friday is supposed to be double time. Right. right? They're asking you to come in, just like on Saturdays. Right. So this is, and the start time for Friday is... Uh, 2.30? 2, 2.30. Yeah. So all right. Know. So y'all hear that, right? So it's, they're saying it's mandatory. And uh, so we'll see what happens. If you're not going to come in, just call out. I mean, they should have gave more notice. Yeah, they, yeah, they got to give you notice. So, because a lot of people saying they're gonna be out of town. This right. Weekend. Yeah, they did. That was on them. So, I guess next week they'll they'll do the right thing and, and have a notice and do it contractually, and not just try to throw it together. So, um, yeah. What else you got, John? That's it. The preload. We need doubles. You sign the sheet. You show up. We need doubles. Uh, Friday start time two thirty. Saturday start time would be three three a.m. Monday morning would be three a.m. So you have to sign a sheet. You have to sign a seniority sheet. And preload, we hurt. Yeah. We need people. <laughs> we always and, need preload. You know, a lot of people working the night, they got their own side deals. So whatever deal you got, make sure you get with your manager and you work it out. Uh, of course, a lot of people working, uh, coming in at 930 at night. Right. Was usually off. Right. Right. Okay. All right. So y'all here here. So y'all make sure if you, if if they tell you it's mandatory, uh, make sure you call because you don't want to get jammed up and then you know I don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, of course, you know we'll fight, but uh, I don't know how much backing we gonna have. So we'll see. Just like most of the drivers are getting eight hours, mm -hmm. right? Some drivers are not getting eight hours, but. There, uh, some of them are scared to say something. Just like uh, the other thing is, like, if you're a new driver and you come in and they tell you that you have to take your own vehicle and meet and meet the trip and you burn your own gas and uh, pay for parking, we don't recognize that. You know, so what happened is if they want to do that, if they want to send the driver out and make them a uh, driver's helper, you have to get the driver's rate, and they had to take you to the trip. You shouldn't drive your own vehicle <coughs> because if you get in an accident or something, it's on you. You know. So what happened is a lot of things going on 623 that our local don't even know what's going on. Shanahan and Unity, like they said Saturday, six of them want us. They don't have a clue. They don't know what's going on down the hub. You know, uh, they said seniority, seniority, seniority. They got a big problem with preload, right? But if you're gonna do seniority and overtime, you gotta do the whole, the whole Everybody, building, right. the whole building, which is which is not happening. You got uh, people that's on they that, that down with them working 12 hours a day, sometimes 20 hours a day, and they've been working since August, and a lot of people don't even know it. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's just unfair. It's just unfair. If you're saying you're gonna do something, let it be fair across the board. Just like with Shanahan, the contract. Every time we look in the contract, it says one thing, but he says something else. It's like Sunday. Sunday is supposed to be double time if you work Sunday. Now they say, oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. If you touch ground packages, it's double time. If you touch air packages, it's straight time. Well, which one is it? Which one is it? I mean, yo, I mean, then this is this is what the problem is, you know. Uh, and now you got the vice president. She filed grievances against her own members for working. The members are not filing grievances saying that my seniority has been violated. She filing it for them. 
Uh, we can't. We in, we in bad shape in six twenty three. Real bad shape. Very bad shape. And labor, UPS, they do whatever they want to do to us in six twenty three. Yeah, Nadine. You know? uh, if if you are, it's still a holiday regardless. You're still going to get paid. It's it's a holiday. Thursday and Friday is a holiday. So uh, if you come in or not, you're still going to get paid because it's a holiday. Just make sure that on, on part time, you got to work the day before and the day after. Uh, to make sure you get paid for both days. Unless they put a personal one. Right, yeah, right. Unless it's already approved that for you to be off. Or um, even in the contract, it says a proven illness. So uh, even one of those things, you, you'll still get paid for Friday. That's about it. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, I did that. Uh, yeah, make sure y'all enjoy it, man. Yeah, again, yeah, because we going to get ready to get out of here for our sisters to get ready to come on the air. Yeah, make sure you guys uh, enjoy your Thanksgiving. We have a lot to be thankful for. You know, it is, I know everybody want to complain, but trust me, um, it could be a whole lot worse. It could be a whole lot worse. Always be thankful. Always. In, every, in everything, give thanks because it could be worse. Trust me, I'm telling you. Um, don't, but don't, don't eat too much because we got to work. <laughs> we don't want y'all to be slow. All right, yeah, don't get sick. Uh, make, and take care of yourself. This this is going to get ready to get really, really rough. Um, make sure you guys take care of yourself. It's going to be cold. Uh, don't overdo it. Don't. Know, I know everybody want to make money. You know, Christmas is coming. Um, you want to get you want to get your kids. You know, um, whatever you want to get them. Um, but make sure you take care of yourself. Make sure you take get a plenty of rest. Get as much rest as you can. Don't don't overdo it. Please don't overdo it. Because I'm going to tell you something. You get hurt up in there and you can't make it. UPS still going to go on. They still going to make those billions and billions of dollars this quarter. And guess what? You're going to be home hurt up and they're going to go right on over you. So uh, don't uh, don't overdo it. All right? Uh, as always, we love you guys. We thank you guys for listening and watching. And make sure you get a ticket for the raffle for the 43-inch Samsung 4K UHD TV. You get 30 days free of Sling T of Sling TV. Um, what that comes with it, and also make sure you have your name on this bylaw amendment because that is very very important. Because transparency equals trust. The more transparency you are, the more trust you have. All right. And make sure you put that out there. Anybody that want to do doubles on preload. You know, since the union, they want to play games, make sure you sign the list. Make sure you sign mm -hmm. that list. You've been told, everybody told you, sign the list, you can work. Right. Sign the list because uh, what's the what's the, the boss boss name? He came around saying, all right. So, yeah, just make sure you come in there. Just make sure you work because they need everybody. Play at work. We need we need all the bodies. Right. Everybody. It, they they, they need man? everybody. It's, it's open to everybody. Look on preload. Right. You know what I mean? We need bodies on preload. So, you should make sure you sign the sheet. And it's no favoritism. Hooker not picking you, Jumbo not picking you. If you sign the sheet, it's supposed to be fair. So I don't want Hooker picking on, going in the cafeteria mm -hmm. and picking uh, <laughs> Sherry or picking yada, yada, yada. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. So you sign the sheet, you can work. Yeah, because they, they, need, they need everybody. It's open to any and every body. All right? We're going to get out of here. God bless you guys. We love you guys. Don't forget to vote. Next year, y'all gonna get tired of us here saying that, but we're gonna tell you and tell y'all till we blew in the face. Everybody complain and say they gotta go, gotta put it on paper, prove it to us. All right, all right, prove it to us. All right, 623, we love you guys. Happy Thanksgiving.